mentioned in the Quran as the priest of a tribe named Madian. And if you open the Bible, you read about Jethro, the priest of Madian. That's why people understood that it must be the same prophet. But there is no explanation to the name except if you think that Sha'ib is nation. So Shu'ayb might be tiny nation like the Midian nation was. Okay, that can be an interpretation. It's not necessary. Yeah, of course, ten names according to Khazal. According to Khazal, he has ten names. Okay, guys, thank you very much. You spent me, uh, you spared me more, much of the uh, guidance about Shu'ayb. So I'll concentrate about his relation to the Druze religion. Okay, so Druze religion is something a bit uh, not so trivial to understand, right? So you need to understand that most religions are about revelation of God. God reveals to a specific prophet in order to deliver his message to the masses of a specific nation by giving them a specific book. That's what we can say about Judaism, Christianity, Islam. God reveals to a prophet to bring the message to a nation by a book. Okay? And the Druze is not like this. And in order to understand why it's different, you need first to remember that Druze is not the proper name. It's a very, very bad name. Al Mawahadun. Or Banu Ma'ruf. Banu Ma'ruf is a later name, but it's also good. It's, it's, it's a modern name. But the ancient name is Al Mawahadun, which means. Believing in one God. Al Mawahadun. Believing in one God. Who understand the unity of God, the ones who understand the unity of God and to understand how come God is one and he is everywhere and there is one God, it's something very very complex, it's actually a secret of the universe, the unity of God and secrets are not there to be told to masses but only to specific people who had enough virtues to understand the secrets of the unity of God. You understand this? So yes. this is not to give to the masses with a book. But they say that if you read the history very carefully, you see that Moses, who did brought the Torah, who did brought the scrolls, the revelation of God, to the people of Israel, at some point in the desert, he was stuck. He didn't know what to do. Too many people coming with too many questions. He, did, he, did not, he could not get out of this. He was in the middle of all the mass and he said, I can't, I can't. So what he did do, he went to consult with his father-in-law, Jethro. So what do we see? Moses, the one who gives the Torah, the revelations of God, he has some point where he needs to consult his, consul his consultor to get advice from someone who knows something that he's not. This is Jethro. Why? Because when God is choosing one to reveal himself to the masses, they're always to the side of him, someone much more quiet, less speaker, not writing, but he is the one who holds the secret. He's by the one who is giving what can be told to the masses, but always is by him there is one who is holding the secret knowledge of the unity of God. Not to tell it to everyone, but when the prophet needs advice, he's going to ask his consultor. You see, this is Moses and Jethro. Now let's go forward. Next revelation of God, Jesus, right? But when, but Jesus also had a secret consultor. This is St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist. He prepared for his coming. Yes, you need to remember, in Muslim tradition, especially Shi'it tradition, and also in uh, Druze tradition, Elijah equals Saint John the Baptist equals, equals Saint Al George. Saint George, what? Equals Saint George. Saint George. And equals Salman al Khadr, Salman yeah, al Farisi. Yeah, and Salman al Farisi. Elijah. All of these figures are Elijah. the same one. Elijah, Elijah and Saint George and. Uh, Salman al Farisi and St. John the Baptist and Al Khadr, all of them are the same person. So these are reincarnation, the spirit. 
He was wandering with him in the desert as the father-in-law of Moses. Moses was married to Jethro's daughter. Yeah, in the time of Exodus. Yeah, this is written. Guys, guys, let me let me proceed, please, 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 please. So Jesus also had the master to ask him question, not the one who gave the book to the public, but the one who holds the secret knowledge. And then you go to Prophet Muhammad, and again, Muhammad is drinking the Quran, but he also has a consulter, someone who holds the secret, not giving a book, but holding the secret next to him. This can be Ali, 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 or Salman al farsi okay? Secret consulter. Like, like Luke and Yoda? Kind of? like? <laughs> Luke and Yoda. I don't know how you're talking about Ah, you, are, you, are, you are right. Yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. But at some point, but at some point in history, at some point in history, God decided that it's time to give secrets to the public. Not to all the public, but a specific caliph in the Fatimid Shiite dynasty was actually sent by God to give the secret knowledge, to give it to the nation. His name was? Hakim Ba'amr Allah. Hakim Ba'amr Allah. Al-Hakim. Al-Hakim is fine for you, don't be there. Al-Hakim Ba'amr Allah. The ruler in the name of God. Al-Hakim Ba'amr Allah. The ruler in the order of God. Only the Nasr. The one who destroyed the Holy Sepulchre in 2009. And then we built it. So you all think that Al-Hakim was a very strange caliph. He was so caprizic. Destroying things, then building things, then giving rights, then taking rights. He was not caprizic. He was a new type of prophet of God acting out the, the real understanding of the universe. And then he passed away in 10... 21 but according to them he did not pass away he just disappeared vanished. he just disappeared Ascend. and after he disappeared ascended. or ascended in 10 ascended. 20, ascended. 21 something new started because now the secrets are here and hakim is not here anymore but the secrets are given and now they can be spread they can be spread to masses of people <coughs> by five messengers five messengers spread them around egypt even though it was forbidden because the successor of Al-Hakim did not want his heritage to continue. He wanted to go back to Orthodox, Fatimid, Shiite, Islam. He did not want these new things, but five messengers secretly started to deliver the message. The most important of them is Hamza ibn Ali. One of the five regretted and left belief and went back to Islam. His name was Nashtatin al Darazi. Yeah, Habibi. Wow. Al Darazi. Hence the Druze. So when you call them Druze, you call them after the one who betrayed. <laughs> no way. Oh, Ismail al Darazi. Ismail al Darazi. I know, we know it, we know it as Ismail al Darazi. Sorry? Ismail. Ismail I know Nishtakim al-Darazi. Yeah, we know it. It's um, from the book, from the... From Iyal Maroon. From Iyal Maroon minority. I know Nishtakim al-Darazi. Okay, it's fine, it's fine. At least, al-Darazi. That's the name of the stone. The name of the stone. Al-Darazi. Darazi. I know that his name was Nishtakim. Sorry. Ismail. He's Nishtakim. He's Ismail al-Darazi. Enough to. The same, the same. What about Hamza ibn Ali? Hamza ibn Ali was the most important messenger. Like... People who say that we tell you the principles of Drew's belief, they say, as Hamza bin Ali told, he like was the most important spreader, so Jews, annunciator of the religion, and Darazi was the one who betrayed. So the Jews, the Jews don't like al -Darazi? Of course not. He left them. He betrayed so why them. Why they get called after? That's the thing. It's a bad name. That's it's stuck. Different. They're, They're stuck with a bad them. name. The name was, in, was there in order to insult them. You think it's, it was like that? You called yourself in you are consulting them. the one who understands the unity of the universe. We called you the one who betrayed, the one who is not uh, persistent, the one who give up. You understand? So it's a, it's a bad name condemning them that would stuck on them.
Who was calling them like that? The Muslims, because the because they were getting fractured. Yes. Uh -huh. And in 1042, in 1042, it's too complicated. No, no, it's no, fine. It's fine. No, no, it's, yeah. not, it's fine. In 221, again, history, secrets of the universe, never told to the public, always to just the secret consulter, to Moses, to Christianity, to Islam, to Prophet Muhammad. But then, then, when, then Al Hakim was sent. Al Hakim is the first one to just give the secrets to everyone. Then in 1021, he disappeared. Mm. And now we can start to spread the belief, the new belief, for 21 yeah, years yeah. till 1042. In 1042, the gates of belief of unity are closed. Close. That's those it. who got it and joined, great. And those who did not join, That's it. lost. No way we to missed join it, guys. the new religion wow. after 1042. God. Got it? Yes. Yeah. They stopped spreading the, 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 the truth religion. religion. Oh, the, the, the secret. The secret. Yes. You need to be born into it. It became too dangerous. They became a very close and secret and keeping inside secret. It was too dangerous to keep spreading it too much. Okay, no, no, let, let me summarize. Starting from 1042, Druze, Druze are being persecuted by all kind of religion. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian, if you're a, a Shiite Muslim, if you're a Sunni Muslim, you don't like Druze. Again, who was persecuted? The Druze. The Druze. So they left Egypt. And they left most of the Middle East, and they left to where? The Cain. Here. Ah, to the Lebanon, Lebanon. Syria, Syria. To all Syria, the Lebanon. Ah, Mazmur. The highest, the highest <laughs> peaks in the Middle East. Jabal Duruz in Syria. Oh, so sorry. very Syria. high mountains in Lebanon. This is hiding, going to places where no more people will ever settle in, so they can live their own life. What is the southern mosque? Bad uh, al no, the, the south and most Druze village in the world, Dalia al Carmel. Dalia al Carmel, the south most. Okay, so actually in Lower Galilee you won't find Druze villages. It's too low. You see them in Upper Galilee, in Carmel, in Western Yarka. Galilee, in Golan Heights. Not in all Golan Heights. Only in the top near Hermon. Not here. So in Lower Galilee, in Lower Galilee, guys, it's very hard. In Lower Galilee, you won't yeah, yeah, find yeah. them. No villages here around, but the holiest place for Druze in the world is here in the Lower Galilee, because this is the tomb of Nabi Shu'eb, the first Druze ever, according to their belief. This is the first Druze, the first secret holder in history. Even though Druism, Druzeism was founded only in 1021, only in 11th century, the origins comes from what Jethro has done, holding the secret, right? But of course, this was not in a Druze area, and all of this area was filled with a big Muslim city, Muslim village. What was the name of the Muslim village here in 1948? Hatin. Hatin. This is home of Hatin up there. You remember that the, the crusade from the other side wanted to cross to this side because here was her spring. Oh, spring, this is, spring. Yeah. this is the spring of Hatin. Oh, this one. This one. Okay. By the way, the, in 1940, so till 1948, the Druze wanted to come and pray in their holiest pray, place, but this was a holy place also to Muslim because this is Islamic Quranic prophet, right? And also to Jews because this is a biblical prophet as well. So both for Jews, both for Muslim, both for Druze inside a Muslim uh, village. In 1948, after Nazareth have fell, have fallen, all the, all the inhabitants of Hattin have left. They said, okay, Tiberias is lost, Nazareth is lost. They left, and their houses were bombed demoralized that they can't get back. The only thing that left from the village is the central mosque with the rooms around it. So you have down there a mosque, abandoned mosque with rooms around it that left, and the private homes are vanished. So now, the only thing left is the maqam. No more village around. And the state of Israel said, because you Druze decided to follow Israel, and they say there is a reason, because the highest leader of the Druze back there in 1948, he said, uh, because Jethro went hand with hand with Moses in the desert, 
We, the Druze, the descendants of Jethro, do the same to the descendant of Moses, going with them. With them, okay. So because of this decision, the state of Israel said, "Let's take the tomb and give it to the Druze for the first time, so they can uh, manage it." Yeah. And from then, from 1948, this place is managed and run by the Druze in Israel. Before that, what Muslims? There were Muslims around, and if you wanted to get in, you need you needed permission from the Muslim. Either you are Jewish, or either you are Muslim. And then they said, "Okay, so what is your festival?" And they say, "What kind of festival? There is time in the year that you celebrate, like Idol Fitter, like uh, Pesach, like uh, Christmas." And they say, no, we are hiding. We can't celebrate out. We, everything we do is secretly. All the prayers we do in secret places. We don't have mosques. We don't have synagogues. We have secret hidden places where we pray. So we don't have big festivals. And they say, okay, but everyone get vacation from work in his festival, right? So Muslim get in Eid al-Fitr and Jews get in Pesach and, and Christian get in Christmas. We want to give you vacation. Can you please do a festival? And they say, okay, everyone has a festival in the spring, right? We have Pesach. We have Easter, even Muslim had the uh, Mouse of Nabi Musa in April. Right. April is a good time. So from this time, 24th of April is the festival, of the Nabi. annual visitation of Nabi Shuaib. This is modern festival that was added to a religion that did not have festivals. 